Hello everyone. So in today's film I actually want to create a look that is very much inspired by 50s makeup, 60s makeup and slightly by 70s makeup. I had a drawer filled with inspirations and I had completely forgotten about it but I discovered it just the other day and I was going through all of my inspirations and I thought I haven't done a look like this before. It's a look that involves paler tones, some shimmery, some matte, and a few blues, but quite a strong lash. So it's super exciting, and I'm actually going to be wearing a wig with it, a blonde wig. I'm not going to be wearing the wig until the end, because unfortunately, as of late, London has been incredibly humid, and I am overheated, and I dislike this humid weather so much. I actually thought I was going to drown, but of course, my own schedule has been so incredibly busy as of late with work and this and that that I, didn't, I wouldn't have had the time to drown. You know, I always think it's uh, correct to schedule in a death. As I've said before, I think you should always let people know when you're going to die. Otherwise, I think it's incredibly impolite just to go and die very suddenly on anybody. It's very rude. There is certainly a time and place for that. So to hop into today's tutorial with great vigor, I first of all began by massaging and lathering La Creme Concentrate by Embrulis into my skin as it was very dry. I then color corrected underneath my eyes with some of Cryolan's Demacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W. Marvelous. Then I employed the use of a favorite foundation mix of mine, which is Elamasca Skin Base in the shade 01, which is the pure white right here, and Estee Lauder's Double Wear in the shade 1C1 Shell. Now, I think this might actually be an older edition as they've brought out a slightly lighter shade, which I tried recently. My sister purchased the lighter shade, very similar to this, a little bit lighter, but a lot more neutral. This one's quite pink. To set all of that foundation through and dispatch any shine from the skin, I then employed the use of a loose powder. This one is Cryolan's Transparent Powder in the shade TL3. Now it shall indeed be the case that I shall be installing a blonde wig with this look. Now even though I've used a lot of typical usual products for which that I use, certainly for my regular viewers, you will be very familiar with many of the products just mentioned. I wanted to create eyebrows that were slightly softer and the shape is quite straight and soft. I'm going to be strengthening it as I go along if I choose to or if I want to, but right now I've just left them quite soft and quite thin. And to create those, I employed the use of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega. I then went in and sketched individual hairs with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso, just to add a little bit of depth and also create the illusion of Hair. So with the base and the eyebrows applied, I'm now going to go straight into the eyes. Now all of the tones that I'm going to be using are quite pale. Of course there's going to be quite a strong lash on the bottom lashes and the top lashes. So it's going to be quite a strong eye, very much inspired by 50s, 60s and slightly 70s references. I'm going to be combining all three today and doing something that is more applicable for me. But first of all, I'm going to be taking this absolutely beautiful cream ivory color and it is Elamasca's powder eyeshadow in the shade Stealth. And I'm just taking that on a Zova 227 brush. I'm just washing that all over the eyelid with a clean Zova 228 brush. Now by going in with a clean ivory tone, it can blank out any discoloration, either it be veins or discoloration. I certainly know on slightly deeper skins, a color like MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Soft Brown is marvelous for just counterbalancing and counteracting any discoloration across the eyelid. So it's really about just finding a color that matches your own skin tone. Of course, with this look, I want a very pale shade anyway. But what I'm doing with this, first of all, is just, just so that I can blank out any purple within the eyelid. Due to the transparency of the epidermis of my eyelids, I sometimes find that my eyelids can look a little bit purple. By counteracting this discoloration, it prevents them from appearing like a hemorrhoid, as it just takes away all of the purple. I'm now going to go in and apply some of Elamasca's powder eyeshadow in the shade Anya or Anja. I'm not 100% certain as to how it is spelt or said, but this is certainly it. It's a very bright, beautiful, pale blue pastel tone. And I'm just taking an indeed most faint amount of it on a MAC Cosmetics 217. And I'm actually going to be taking that quite far into the inner corner. And I have found that one of the most marvelous ways to creating a socket, and certainly if you're going to go in and cut the crease, is just to tilt your head back just ever so slightly, for which I trust will reveal my most wide neck. What I want to do with that is just wing it out. So it's not going to be totally winged. The whole look isn't going to wing out. It's just going to almost come down and then flick out. And if you so happen to struggle to create the shape, one useful method of creating this almost flicking out like winged eye is to tilt your head down and start to pull it out. So I'm pulling it upward and out by tilting my head down, 
That way I'm able to see, you will be able to see that it creates the map. So we're then going in with the rest of the color. So I've now gone in and applied the blue shade Anya all through my socket and winged it out slightly. But I don't want to, as I said, wing the entire look outward. I just want to pull the outer part upwards. So it's almost as if there is a slight dip at the outer part and then it comes out. That's what I want to do today. Now I don't want the blue to look too blue and too cold. I want it to have a slight greenness to it as well. So I'm going to be going in with some of Inglot's powder eyeshadow in the shade 372, but just only through the socket. And I'm just painting that through the socket with a Louise Young LY38A brush. Now even though this colour is just as vibrant as the Anya, it will give us slight depth and it will make the Anya look a little bit more turquoise. But I just want to put that through the socket. And a great way to do this, of course, is to tilt the head back. And I'm not focusing too much of the colour at the outer corner in the socket. I'm going to take it all the way in to the inner corner so that the socket is well defined on all parts. And then I'm going back in with our MAC 227 with our Anya colour, what's left of it, and just blending everything together just to ensure seamlessness. And I'm just pulling that colour 372 just outward, just ever so slightly, just so that everything is consistent. And then I'm just taking a little bit of that 327 and pulling it more onto the lid, so down from the socket. Now I'm going to take some of Inglot's powder eyeshadow in the shade 348, which is this very cool tone, biscuity grey colour. It's slightly more on the dark side of things, but it's not too dark. And I'm just going to take a little bit of it just to strengthen our socket. And I'm applying that on the same brush for which that we used to apply a 372 colour, just to really strengthen the socket. I'm actually taking most of the product off on the back of my hand. And never be afraid to go back in with your blending brush from before. It is a marvellous way of ensuring seamlessness. And then enacting the same steps upon the other eye. Now I'm going to be taking some of Kryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade White. It's a pure white. And I'm just warming it up on the back of my hand first of all. Before I apply it, just quickly going back in and ensuring seamlessness by going through the socket. And I want to apply as thin a layer as first of all and then build it up. And I'm just applying it straight onto the eyelid. I'm just using the edge of the brush to create a shape. I'm taking it right into the inner corner as well. And then at the outer corner, instead of following the natural socket, I'm going to just wing it out slightly. So I've gone in and rather crudely sketched in a new eyelid and a cut crease. Now I wanted it to wing outward, as you can see it wings outward. Now I'm going to go in with a matte white tone just to set the Dermacolor Cream Concealer for which that I just applied. And to set that through I'm going to be taking Elamasca's Powder Blusher in the shade Intrigue, which is this absolutely beautiful matte white colour. And just before I set it I'm just going back in and patting any little areas just to make sure that I don't get too many creases, as there are more folds in my eyelid than on a walrus. And I'm just pressing and packing that intrigue colour onto the eyelid with a MAC 239 brush. Now I'm taking a flat liner brush, this is by NARS Cosmetics, and some of that intrigue colour, and just pushing it into my crease. Just really sharpen the line. Now for the underneath of the eyes, I was going to go in with a colour like MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega, but I felt it might be a little bit too warm, but I want something that's sort of a soft neutral tone. So I'm going to go in with a grey based shade instead. And to do so I'm going to be taking Elamasca's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade 349, which is also a colour I use for contouring all the time. It's absolutely marvellous. And I'm just applying that with the Charles Fox 8146031 brush. Now I'm going to make it quite strong and smoky. And then and I'm just going to blend the edges of it with an Inglot 80H PS brush just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Now I'm going to go in and line the eyes and to do so I'm going to be taking some of Inglot's AMC gel eyeliner in the shade 77 and I shall be applying it with a Space NK bent eyeliner brush. Now for the eyeliner I actually just want to line the upper lash line. I don't want to do too much of a wing even though I always say that and I end up with greater wings than a Boeing 747. So I'm just going Going to line the upper lash line but not extend the wing out too far, just thicken it just ever so slightly at the outer corners. With the eyeliner now applied, I'm now going to take some of Inglot's eyelash curlers and curl the eyelashes. 
for mascara, I'm going to be going in and applying the Balm's What's Your Type Mascara in the shade Black. Now, if you are a regular viewer of mine, you will see this all the time. It is one of my go-to mascaras. Now, because I'm going to be going in with very hefty false eyelashes, I'm only going to apply a very thin layer of this mascara. Now, for false eyelashes, I'm going to be taking some of these Vivi Collections eyelashes for the top lashes and for the bottom lashes I'm going to be taking a set of Prima eyelashes. These ones are for lower lashes and to glue them into place I shall be using some of the Duo Adhesive Glue and I shall return once both sets are glued on. So with the eyelashes now applied I'm now going to go in and apply contour blusher and highlighter. So I'm going to be going in with quite a warm tone for contour and today I'm going to be taking Cryolens Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Sahara and I'm applying it with a MAC Cosmetics 116 brush. And I just stipple it on first of all and then I move the brush very very gracefully across the skin and swirl it around. Now this only really works if you've applied either a light layer of foundation. However, today I have used a very full coverage foundation. To swirl the brush around you must have first of all set your foundation thoroughly. Otherwise, if you swirl around on foundation that isn't particularly well set, if it's not matte to touch, then you will disturb the formation of the foundation for which that you've applied. So I'm going to make this really, really warm today because of course I'm going to be going in with a blonde wig. And I'm just brushing it upward onto the cheek and the other side. For blusher, I'm going to be taking the blusher from this Sleek Makeup Face Form Contouring and Blush Palette Light 373. And I'm applying that blusher on a NARS number no. 6 brush just to really warm up the look. And I'm taking the blusher quite high as I want it to look quite 70s. I want it to look really sunny. And I'm packing on quite a lot of it. And to mute down the severity of the blusher and the powder contour, I'm going to be taking MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade MW10. And with the same NARS brush, I'm just stippling that over what we've applied just to reduce the severity. To highlight, I'm going to be taking some of Becca's Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Pearl. And this is the pressed version of the shade and the product. And I'm just going to be applying that to the cheekbones first of all on a crown brush unbranded brush. Just any highlighter brush will do marvellously. I'm taking it onto the cheek slightly and buffing it in. A little bit more of it on the other side. And I'm really just layering up the shimmer. I don't really care if it gives me texture. I just want the skin to be really, really glossy. I'm adding a little bit of that on the forehead. Not that my forehead really needs further attention brought to it. And I always like to apply a little bit of it to the top of my nose, just at the bridge of the nose as I have a slight protrusion of brow bone. So by applying a little bit of shimmer there, it draws light to that area, which diffuses the shadow for which that my brow bone creates. And I want to apply a little bit of it on the chin and a little bit of it to the cupid bow. Now for lips, it's a little bit of a difficult one for lips because I'd prefer to just blank them over with foundation and maybe do a little bit of a stain or a sheen. However, my lips are more unsymmetrical than a mountain range. So I'm going to go in first of all with some of Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk just to correct the asymmetry within my lips. Then I'm going to blank over the lips with a little bit of foundation. I'm just correcting any asymmetry within the lips. With the lip liner now applied, I'm going to buff a tiny bit of MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Saint Germain, just onto the central part of the lip. And I want it to be brighter and lighter, but not a strong, heavy color all over the lips. I'm just building the colour up in the centre of the lips. And now I am employing the use of some roll from the lavatory just to blot off the lipstick. So that more or less completes the look. I have gone in and added a blonde wig, which is quite a stark difference to my, of course, my black hair. And I've added a little motif to the side. I must, of course, take the liberty to express my gratitude to Donna Love for, of course, gifting me this blonde wig. I had a lot of fun creating this look for you here today. Even though I've ended up looking sort of like a deranged owl, I think the look is absolutely marvellous and it was a lot of fun to create. And it's actually quite simple and easy. It just requires a steady hand in certain places. And of course, this look themes many influences from many different periods. I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching and of course, take care. Bye.